Tane Randall setting up to lead the hucker. Plenty of intensity there from Case Muse as the All Blacks G up for this most important test match. Let's go sideline, Smithy. Tell us a bit about the atmosphere down there. Absolutely amazing, Nisbo. Conditions, well, uh, it's quite breezy at ground level. Noticeable that both kickers, in particular Andrew Merton, spent a lot of time working out the conditions, direction of the win. Nisbo see their jersey 19, a late change for the Australians. to Taikefu is in for Mark Connors. OK, Smithy, thanks for that. So Connors goes on to the bench. Kefu is in the starting lineup. Rod McQueen has uh, pulled a late one. And uh, Jonathan Kaplan of South Africa with the whistle this afternoon. Southern Hemisphere referee, thank heavens for that. Ed Morrison of England and Rob Dixon of Scotland are running the touch. Steve Larkin, such a key man. George Gregan to an association with Larkham. Wonderful combination. Daniel Herbert in midfield. It's going to be tough out there. There won't be too many gaps, one wouldn't imagine. Tremendous excitement around the stadium. The Bledisloe Cup is at stake this afternoon as Jonathan Kaplan checks with the respective skippers. First international match at the new stadium in Wellington is underway. And Andrew Mertens gets an early touch for Eremia. The strong take it up man and immediately the Wallabies dive over the top. Marshall to go quickly. Case Muse. Marshall hands it off. Mertens saw the gap. Dragged down by David Giffen and number four. All Blacks keeping it in hand. Black Adder feeds it to Marshall. Taking on the Australian defence early in the match as they did in Sydney. They've reached the 10 metre line. Heaved out by Lomu. Mertens puts his boot to it. Latham's got a lot of ground to make. Umanga closing the angle right down. Mertens again. Wide to Randall. Solid defence by the Wallabies, and it's a post-tackle quickly in, so the first stoppage comes with a scrum, and a minute for the first sequence of play. Well, it's been an emphatic start by New Zealand, confident also, very, very comfortable with the ball in hand, setting up the ruck, controlling possession, clever kick from Mertens, and well answered, of course, by Latham. Straight one-on-one, -on -one as Umanga goes past Roth, Picked up, though, by the loose forward defence. Mertens working wide for Alatini. Larkham has to make the tackle in midfield. The All Blacks have had all the ball so far. Marshall probing in close. And here is the first turnover as it's knocked forwards. And it'll be Wallaby's ball right on halfway. So this will be interesting to see what the Australians do from the first scrum. Will they work the short side? Interesting, isn't it? Equal weight per pack. The loose forwards are identical. At 110 kgs apiece. Regan for Larkham. Herbert! Clean break! Feeds it up! And the Mortlock is chased by Umanga! He'll make it though! Daniel Herbert opened them up wide. Sterling Mortlock scores! What a blistering and acceptable try by Australia. Fantastic to make the break so early. So early. 
It was a strength in the first test at Homebush. Have a look at that. The dummy and the gap open. There was no loose forward in the hole. Marshall, Miss Marshall, threw the pass beautifully. And Sterling Mortlock only just enough speed to escape the, the clutches of Umanga from behind. This will be a great view, Glenn. Yes, it's the inside D defence of the All Blacks was found wanting again. Merton's drifted wide, but uh, Kronfeld and Marshall need to get across a little bit quicker. Well exposed by uh, that strength of Herbert there in midfield. It was the All Blacks who started with the Russian Sydney. The Wallabies, with their first possession of the game, have scored the try. And Mortlock, to add the extra two, 7 to nil. Quite outstanding, really. Grant, it was well spotted. The first time they touched the ball, they scored a try. And we see it again. So comfortably beat the defence. Cleverly, too. Nothing accidental about that. Almost a set move. All Blacks had all the ball early, but it was in their own half. Now then to Wallaby territory with uh, Steve Larkham. And a powerful clearance from inside the 22. Takes it back to halfway. Wallabies have not been a good first half team throughout this season, but they couldn't ask for a better start than that. Well, we have heard that they were desperate to win this game today. To straighten up the show after losing narrowly at Homebush. I sense a great game on our hands here today. Ron Cribb, the new athlete at number eight for New Zealand. Short to Black Adder. He's got Marshall. Doesn't need him at the moment. Almost to the 22. Now it's Andrew Mertens. Gets it back. They're all in there, but it's been stolen away. The pass didn't go as far as Lamu. And the Wallabies back in possession. There it is for Gregan. Larkham for the second time putting his boot to it. Oliver getting back. Well, Larkham, Stephen Larkham, he's a great player. The alchemist of the Australian backline without doubt. Blackadder from the front, backed himself and set it up. New Zealand in a good attacking position here. Number 19, you can see him in there, Tara Kefu. Heading towards the back where Cribb is safe again for Blackadder, who's had a couple of storming runs to get this game underway. Taken in by Josh Cronfeld, driven back by Richard Harry. Now Alatini slips it to Iremia. Big defence by the Wallabies in midfield. Mertens. Cronfeld, quick hands. Oliver wasn't expecting it. And knocked on by Joe Roth. Well, I don't know. I think Oliver was expecting it, but it was just so quickly passed to him. It was very well worked, I thought. They came back to short side again. They plugged one way, and it was blocked on the open side. So Merton's making the decision, and that's what he's there for. A decision making at first 5 8. Well, the All Blacks very confident to move the ball from anywhere. They have to, in my opinion. Marshall running straight at Larkham. All Blacks using Blackadder at uh, halfback. Eremia still inside their own 22. Alatini. Cullen gets an early touch. Again, the ball knocked down and it's uh, knocked forward by Richard Harry. This is high-risk stuff from the All Blacks inside their 22. Oh, I'd say rather precarious, really. Cullen running across field and passing the same direction as the defence was drifting. That's a setup for an intercept, and so near. However, I believe the attitude to be the correct one. Utilisation of possession. You've got to back yourself, and this team is. You don't win against the best side in the world if you don't back your talents. Merton's running. Umanga had support, couldn't deliver to Kronfeld on the inside. Now Marshall sets them going with Oliver. Alatini. Game being played at terrific speed. Kronfeld, rather loose to Lomu, tries to hand off Mortlock, does so. And they finally get to him. 
but it took three of them. Well, it was disappointing for Jonah, I guess, to get the ball and a couple of opponents at the same time. But as usual, he made yardage. It was well tackled, well covered by Australia. Once again, New Zealand comfortable with possession. A series of it. Well, Anton Oliver playing with panache at first 5 8. Michael Foley. David Giffen easily. Foley takes the return ball. Gregan across now to Jason Little. Playing in his last test match today against the All Blacks. Larkham feeds it up to Latham. Room for Mortlock. Might have been hit late. Let's wait and see. It's still live. Now, if this bounces back, Latham, oh dear. Well, he's always been an expressive player, Latham. The dive was in vain for sure. It looked like it was. However, we're coming back for something. Have a little look here. It was the kick through which gave Latham an opportunity. And was it called a late tackle? A, a late charge, perhaps? Forlorn dive by Chris Latham. Now, the All Blacks had a choice here. They could either have the 22 or go to the scrum where Latham put his boot to it. Trib again. Chance to get some steam up this time. Good charge by the big number eight. Marshall, good hands from Maxwell inside to Tane Randall. Still playing the high-risk rugby near their own 22 as Eremia takes it in. Wallabies fanned out as uh, Anton Oliver. Well, that's why it's high-risk rugby, because it's inside territory. One mistake like that, support a little bit too slow, perhaps. A player holding onto the ball on the ground, and that concedes a penalty. Look at that, though, 74% possession. That's significant in comparison to the previous match against Australia. But they're behind seven points, which will now probably be ten points on the scoreboard. So, really, things going Australia's way. Yes, well, it's a classic example, isn't it, of setting up the ruck with no support or insignificant support in comparison to the opposition. So it was a fair penalty, a fair cop. And Sterling Mortlock, he's an interesting character. I think there's a big question mark whether he can front under pressure, this man. We saw that in the Super 12 final where he cracked. However... At Homebush, he did everything that was asked. He's already started the day with a penalty very close to the sticks, which will have given him confidence. Sometimes kickers only need to kick the first one. Well, it really was a dreadful kick. Way to the left. He dragged it, didn't he? He dragged it left. Mertens downtown with a long one. Chris Latham in position. They'll meet him about halfway. And he's isolated too, Latham, well and truly. But they get to him pretty smartly. Last line! Therefore, Gregan to free up to Larkin. The All Blacks are offside. And I think it was Maxwell who was standing far too flat. Yep, number five, Norman Maxwell. Just up, perhaps, in front of the last man's feet. There it is, you can see it. Yes, probably. Well, it was touch and go. Anyway, it's a, it's a point-scoring opportunity or a kick for touch, which they've opted for. Retaining the throw. And basically be able to call the tune from this line-out. So we've got, what is this, a four-man line-out? So lessens the opportunity, of, all, of course, for obstruction or competition, perhaps. And maybe utilising the back forwards in midfield. Giffen again. Gregan for Mortlock. The try scorer so far in the game. Taken in by David Wilson. Jim Williams, who was such a dominant figure in the Sydney Test. Slinging it wide again, the danger man here, but easily passed Hoft. Here's Mortlock again. And Marshall manages to get in the road this time. Well, it's intensity plus, isn't it? Australia seeming to find a man in space. 
with relative ease. Such a confident, clever side. And that's more like well tackled, I thought, by Callum here. Must come down first. And of course, the support was equaled by the New Zealanders. John Eels, what a wonderful lock forward and winner of possession he's been for Australia. Williams is the target. Kefu, number 19, driving off him. 6 or 7 metres okay. short as Gregan feeds it off. Breaks down this time and uh, Maxwell has regained possession. All Blacks had an overlap but uh, Merton's opted to kick. And skillful play by Latham. If he can keep this in, oh dear, now the call. So it'll be back to the scrum perhaps. Option. Kicking the ball dead of course Point from option. field of play. Point option. option. Scrum more. Well, that was a great, skillful little exercise by Latham because really the kick from Mertens was landing beyond his grasp and he speculated it ahead twice. That one too long, of course. So New Zealand with a scrum very close to touchline means there's only one option. It's open too far, side. Too far. Come in. Well, I guess the other option is for Mertens to kick the touch, which will concede the line-out throw. And I'm not sure whether that's prudent. Very interesting first 14 minutes. The All Blacks have had a lot of ball, but very little of it inside the Australian 22. Marshall, now the kick does come from Mertens. Didn't strike it that well. It'll sit up eventually for Joe Roth. Met head on by Umanga. And big powerful defence. Well, that's exactly what New Zealand wanted. Mertens not trying to kick it into touch, trying to keep it in play with the ability to either set up a ruck in this position here drive the man into touch perhaps which is what happened and now New Zealand throw a chance to relieve perhaps from inside their territory ball must come in all right leave him leave him two leave him line outs were a problem in Sydney for the All Blacks and uh, Another one snaffled by the Wallabies in the form of John Eels. Here's Herbert. Oh, smashing straight into Mertens, who goes reeling back. Get off! Five out from the 22. Right and centre field for Gregan. Larkham on for Jason Little. Eels is right there with him. Now it's a Larkham again. Kefu. Trip off and to uh, Latham who's up in the line, they keep it going, Larkham, Joe Roth for the corner, they've got another one, the wingers have got them both. It's like repeating the first try, another exceptional try, created steadily, breaking the advantage line three occasions, and the support play, There he is, shrugging the last tackle. Joe Roth, what a footballer. Well, Murray, the key to this is the change of angles, and you're right, the Wallabies were able to break in behind. You can just see Latham there coming off the shoulder, changing the angle, getting in behind. And here it is again. It's Larkham goes in, and it was Roth who changed the angle, beat the tackle. The Wallabies are running into space, not at the man at present. Well, they're so creative, and they are a handful when they have the ball in hand. Very confident, very confident with the ball in hand, their support play. And as you say, Greg, their angles make the defence so much more difficult. Tremendous rugby side we're watching here. Two tremendous sides. It'll be very interesting to see if New Zealand can come back like Australia did at Homebush Stadium. 24 years of age, 57th test match for Joe Roth. His 47th consecutive game. And celebrates with... Another try. <laughs> Hoping to bring it around, but uh, not able to do that. But Joe Roth gets the second try for Australia. <laughs> And the crowd are rather stunned by this, just as the Stadium Australia crowd was stunned three weeks ago. 
John Eels, it all started when he stole the New Zealand lineup. It's there for the All Blacks. It's been knocked on by the Wallabies. So now they have some sort of field position. The All Blacks tipped on for Lomu. There for the captain, Todd Blackadder, to set it again. Mertens for Alatini. Umanga! 22-metre line with some forward momentum now, the All Blacks. Looking blindside with Alatini. Lomu again. 15 Best metres chance. out. Best chance the All Blacks have had so far. Umanga goes again. Referee playing an advantage. Mertens for Crib. The kick for Cullen. Brilliant. Well, the, the crowd say it all. There's so much noise here. I can't hear my own voice. Well, that is music to my ears to see our number eight with those sort of skills. Ron Crib. Well, Tana Umanga making the initial break. He's a handful. This man couldn't get the pass away but they retain possession well. A great sequence of play. Here's the last little department. Have a look at Crib. Towed it through, end on end. You beauty. And Christian Cullen, he just keeps on dotting them down. He sure does. That's 38 tries now in Test Rugby for Christian Cullen. One short of Jeff Wilson. And the All Blacks, well, they had to hit back. It's the only way to answer, isn't it? An Australian team that was almost, well, I wouldn't say running rampant, but certainly scoring all the points. What a goal kicker, Andrew Mertens. So that makes it very interesting now. 12 points to seven. And that'll give them some confidence. It'll give everybody in the crowd a lift too. And Murray, it's about taking the right options, isn't it? And that was the right option. Cullen was marked, and Cribb had the skills to capitalise on that. Larkin makes the restart. Oliver to claim it. Sets it for Justin Marshall. Mertens, skill for a little kick. Mertens looking to regain. He can't get it. And it falls for Jim Williams. That could have gone anywhere as it's brought away by Gregan. Latham got through the first tackle of uh, Tane Randalls. Now Michael Foley. See, that was incredible tackling, wasn't it? And they still kept the ball. Williams is wide, but the All Blacks are up very smartly. Almost driving the back, the Australians backwards. Lost line, lost line, seven Herbert, seven. Herbert coming on a run, but he had to slow, lost his momentum. Now it's behind the advantage line, but the ball's coming back. Offensive defense so vital in this game now. The little kick through is proving to be a oh, great benefit in this game. And uh, he's got uh, Alama Aramia for putting the shoulder in late. So the little kick and a slightly late charge was the call the crowd didn't like it but i think it was fair just ahead let's play let's play so latham kicking to touch for line out to australia deep on attack well they'll be very keen to score again to uh, just to widen that gap a little bit grant well we thought this would be a tight duo game Three tries in the first 20 minutes. Just stay in there, stay in. Foley looking for Eels. Finds him again. Now Gregan. Daniel Herbert. Again he does it. And then he got hit in a classic tackle. And here come the All Blacks with Justin Marshall. Well, it's a great counter attack. But it all happened because of a big tackle. Mertens again. Here's the little chip through once more. Eremia tackle without the ball. They'll get the advantage here. Tronfeld looking blindside. And uh, the penalty. 
Well, I wonder whether we Drop could see how it is down on the touchline, Smitty. The Tackle without the ball. Well, the atmosphere on. is unbelievable, Murray. I'll tell you, just reiterating the difficult wind conditions, that was a magnificent conversion by Mertens, but they're having all sorts of problems, the line kickers and the goal kickers, judging the breeze. See that, see, that was the tackle then we saw of Lomu driving Herbert back, which forced the knock forward. The scrum wasn't taken, of course, because this very competent referee, Jonathan Kaplan, played the advantage law. Marshall broke away, and this is the end result. New Zealand ball about 38 metres out. An opportunity to have a look at the stats of the game online. There's the website for you as... Anton Oliver finds Tane Randall. Beautiful ball to the back of the line out, giving some space. Here they are, some intricate moves. Aaron Alista, oh my God! Oh, oh again. That equals the record. That's absolutely brilliant again. Well, set the world alight, why don't you? They're certainly doing that at the Westpac Trust Stadium here in Wellington. Who would have believed we could have had a game to rival Homebush? And we certainly have. We've seen some glorious tries to date in this game. Well, here it is here. What a work. What a move. So many different directions and angles. And Umanga, of course, for the flat-footed opponent to beat. Drew the last man. Absolutely beautiful. And through to Christian Cullen. Coops, give us a hand on this one. Well, the Australians are known as the masters of manipulation, but the pupils here have taught the masters a lesson. That is superb. The intricate move in midfield. Well, I couldn't help but see the reaction from the normally phlegmatic Christian Cullen. We saw emotion, expression, delight in his face. It's the record equal in try. He goes to 39 to join Jeff Wilson. Just the ball, just the ball! The brilliant Christian Cullen. And the All Blacks with the conversion are ahead by 14 to 12. Andrew Mertens has uh, kicked four points today. He's closing in on Grant Fox. But uh, the Wallabies have this penalty right in front. Well, although we couldn't quite see where the ball was, you just saw the time. And there was a Wallaby forward leaning over the top which I, I guess we'll get an opportunity to see in a second. But have a look after this kick at goal. In fact, here it is. So there's Marshall with the ball on the deck. He's holding on to it, so he's almost... And you see that Australian player bent over the top, trying to win possession, and, and Marshall was stopping him. That's the reason for the penalty. So here it is. Australia with another three points. Wallabies back in front. The lead for the All Blacks was short-lived, but what a test this has been already. Sterling Mortlock brings up 100 points in test matches in just his sixth international. Mertens. Nicely claimed by David Giffen. Larkham with the clearing kick. Lomu is hovering back. Check the counter-attack here. Lomu and Cullen, what a combination. They've got a bit to do, though. Umang has got back to help out. He makes the break. What a game he's having. Tronfeld knocked down. It was knocked back, in fact, by the Wallabies. But it's a turnover just the same. Daniel Herbert, he's been a danger man with two clean breaks in the match so far. Larkin with the in pass. All Blacks expecting that. And yes, Joe Roth held on for too long. The player on his feet has all the rights, and Joe Roth just hung on a little bit too long. Well, I've admired that footballer, Joe Roth. And I can't believe that he's played all those tests in his bone, and, and he's only 24 years of age. Yes, incredible record. He just held on, you can see there, 
those All Black players who are standing have the right to go for the ball immediately. And it was Alama Ramirez coming away with it at the end. Now this is a very big kick, Murray, because if he lands it, Andrew Mertens will become the highest point scorer in the history of New Zealand Test Rugby. He's scored four so far today. Grant Fox is the record holder. It's a difficult kick. Looks like it's away to the left. We'll have to wait a wee while. And uh, Latham to force, and the restart will come from the 22. Well, we noticed earlier in the day when the kickers were out there practicing their kicks, the wind is swirling a bit here inside the stadium. Of course, the architect tells us 65% of the wind is deflected off the roof. Whether that's a reality or not, I'm not sure. Merton's hands off to Umanga. Cullen! Support from Kronfeld. Umanga, great hands. Oliver to carry on. Snapped up by Maxwell. And they've said it again. Oh, a pass off his knees. Here's Tripp. Tripp with good acceleration. And knocked down firstly by the Wallabies, it would seem. Yes, it is. Well, wrong Crib having the power to break through, but I like the way the All Black players, all of them, are half breaking a tackle and getting the pass away in the tackle, which in effect creates a break. But have a little look at this Christian Cullen showing the ball, going through, then giving the pass very quickly. Cromfeld, Umanga, Oliver, well, wasn't he calm and collected? Oliver assessing the situation with the ball in hand, setting it up. And then the pass, unfortunately, not finishing it cleanly, a little bit loose. Well, we're going to be looking at defence uh, this afternoon, and this is a try that Australia scored. You just saw there, Marshall was the man who really should have got across. He didn't get across, and uh, Mertens wasn't the man initially we thought. Marshall and Cromwell need to look after that inside line. A lot of clean breaks from both teams so far in this match. Richard Harry in a bit of trouble. Thirty-sixth Test match this afternoon for Richard Harry, and his last against the All Blacks. He's uh, retiring. <laughs> Bernie's corner. Bernie, you've been relegated, old chap. My old friend is now Jonas' corner, and rightfully so. New breed, new stadium. Aramea nudges through. Here comes Jonah. And in the end, it's Latham who runs it out. Latham getting away with it. Just take a break. Just open, just open. Just take a break. Now, touch judge uh, Rob Dixon of Scotland has come in to say something. I don't know about which number, though. 15 in, penalty to the Blacks. To the Blacks, Blacks. okay. There's a black player taken out without the ball, pulling one man without the ball penalty. So let's see if we can pick it up. The little kick from Uramir was a good one, end over end. And maybe it was Uramir taken out. We couldn't quite see, but it looked like he was taken out. So rather similar penalty previously to the Australians at the other end of the track. So Andrew Mertens, a much more advantageous position, this one. Grant Fox, 645 test points. In 46 test matches, Andrew Mertens now with the opportunity to go past that mark. So, Smithy, is there a bit of wind down there? He definitely pulled that a bit, though. Yeah, I think it's giving both of them a real problem. We saw Mortlock's first effort, too, was way to the left, and uh, on that occasion, it just looked to me as if he snatched at the ball a wee bit. Maybe anxious but about the record, right. maybe anxious about, about the conditions. Right. It's not easy, though, Murray. They go short, Larkham, clever play. Dragged down by Cronfeld, carried on by David Wilson. Williams driven back in the tackle, play on, 
I said the referee and the All Blacks have turned this. Well, crucial turnovers, aren't they? Randall brings it away as the sun comes through. Off to Mertens. Again, they go with a little kick. Here's a chance for Jason Little. And who was that but Todd Blackout to pull off the covering tackle? Now Gregan, wide for Joe Roth. The game was soaring up and down the park. Gregan again for Larkin. Back again for Jason Little. Gregan on the in pass. Roth, 22 metre line. Little once more, off to Kefu. And Fletcher Dyson can't hang on, so they play the advantage again. It's a knock on, definitely. Looking for the advantage. It's a matter of how long this advantage law is played. Mertens clears from the Maxwell pass. The referee sees no advantage there and brings them back for the scrum. So, in other words, in other words, he's come right back for the very first infringement. So New Zealand in a position here we, as we see the replay and the mistake, that was the initial mistake. Beautifully grabbed by our cameraman. But we've got a scrum situation with about 15 metres to the touchline, which means that the New Zealand team can work the, the touchline. The safety of the touchline, if there's a, a fault or mistake, it means it's a difficult kick at goal. Or they can throw caution to the wind and give it to that man on the open side. That's Alatini outside him. Uramir Lomu. Well, I've got a handful to stop these guys when they've got the ball. So see Australia turning that scrum a little bit. Probably aware of that big blind side. If you, if you promote, of course, your loose head, Australia's loose head, that turns the scrum, makes it very hard for Crib to detach. So really, if the scrum stays straight, I'd be looking for Crib detaching and coming around. Get back. No, no, no! Yes, play. Marshall wants to go smartly. Off to Carl Hoft. Here's Case Mews. He's got a good turn of pace for a big man. But yes, he did right well, didn't he? He broke the tackle, but I don't think they'll be happy with him going into touch because, of course, that gives the line-out throw to Australia. But good to see Mews running onto the ball. He's saying, stop me if you can. Keeps the legs pumping. He now sights a touchline and thinks, I'm in trouble here. And he tried to release the ball so that he wasn't in touch. The main man in the line-out, John Eels. Michael Foley looking for Eels deep. Not a good throw. A one for the All Blacks against the throw. Randall charges towards the 10-metre line. Mertens in pass to Muse. That's good to see Muse again in support. Coming again for Justin Marshall. On the inside to Maxwell. The Aussies claiming it was forward. Jonathan Kaplan said no, it wasn't. Again on the inside. Marshall hesitating slightly. Eremir straightens. Feeds Kronfeld, linking well. Lomu bounces out of a few of them. Now they go blindside again. Marshall. Beautifully done by Marshall. Eremir showed good hands too. Here they go. Alatini. Thrilling test. Isn't it a pleasure to watch such dynamic play? Both back lines so dangerous with the ball, so creative. Marshall saw that the pass was covered there and went on the inside and still kept the ball alive. And that's why you can see it change for the Wallabies. He's got the ball in his hand. Jeremy Paul on and Jersey 22 for Michael Foley. Well, his mobility, I guess, has brought him on so early. It's probably sooner than one would have thought. Although, wow, look at the clock. I see 34 minutes. Time goes so quick when, a, when we have a test like this. Big change by Rod McQueen. Normally makes it at half time. Gregan across for Jason Little again. Now, Gregan, that's a rare kick from George Gregan. Well, it shows the pressure mounting, of course. Gregan happy to take the 30 odd metres. He's a great player, this. He's such a facilitator for this this Australian side.
Just keeping the play in motion. Perpetual motion. Murray also may be kicked because he backs his side to steal this one back. You think so? That's a bit cool, Smithy. Let's have a look at this line out. Are you trying to put the heat on the New Zealand jumpers? Just the ball, just the ball. Randall didn't have to do much jumping. 10 metre line, Wallabies territory. Cronfeld. Oh, accidentally offside. That's an effect. He, he was at correct, actually. Kaplan was correct. You could just see it. Although I think it was a bit tough. Okay, so there's a lot of decoys here. And Randall knew he was going to get the ball out of post, so he didn't jump. Obviously, if he jump in the air, then there's more time wasted. He wanted to catch the ball and move over the advance line as soon as possible. And that's under seat. Equally decisive on the penalty. The penalty, I thought, was tough to start with. And that was an equal, equally tough penalty on the Australians. So I guess it's even Stevens. All Blacks organising themselves. Great attacking position here. Centre field. Marshall for Karl Hoft. Hold there, hold there. Now Mertens. Tronfeld, who's had a lot of the ball to play with in this game. Mertens shovels onto Alatini. Lovely step, as he's so capable of doing. Mertens. Mertens going for the crash. That's unusual. Marshall straight up the middle. What's the turnover? So the turnover came from a hand on the deck. And that was picked up by the touch judge. Is that Ed Morrison down there? Yes. Yeah. The best way of destroying a game of rugby, make Ed Morrison the referee. I thought that was a desperate performance last week. South Africa versus Australia. He controlled the game. He was the number one man on the field. What a tragedy. So let's uh, set it up again for Andrew Mertens. He's had a couple of opportunities. Chance once more to become the highest test point scorer in New Zealand history. And that is the record breaker for Andrew Mertens. Well, he's a magnificent footballer, Andrew Mertens. Absolutely superb, I think, his contribution. Look at the concentration on his face. Yes, a fabulous goal kick, Andrew Mertens. And you're quite right, Murray. Look at the, the rhythm there. Very smooth, good follow through, and a great result. So that didn't go 10, but uh, Kronfeld played it anyway, so play carries on. All Blacks are happy to take the possession, but now they've got to get it down onto the ground. It's been ripped away, so there was no advantage for the All Blacks at all. Kefu off to Wilson. Advantage is over. Referee was playing it, and uh, there's going to be another penalty. Last line doesn't matter. Rucks formed. Well, that's a twist of fate. Just, just... Well, the unflappable Todd. Back, please. Nothing happening there. Just keep your nose out of it. Conceded yes. 10 metres. You can't come in from that side. It's just a tackle situation. Please go. Well, it all started, didn't it, from the kickoff that didn't go 10 metres by Australia. Cronfeld made the decision, and at the time it was wise to play the ball. He's saying, he's saying that is a ruck. So you cut that means if it's a ruck, the New Zealand player came in from in front of the last man's foot in the ruck. So that's what the penalty was for. Chance now for Sterling Mortlock to put the Wallabies back in front. As we close in on halftime. One point lead for the Wallabies. Mortlock kicks his second penalty, 18-17. Well... On the stroke of half time, we're in for a stimulating and vibrant second half. I can see that. Well, it's had a bit of everything in this half, Grant. 
Not much different to Sydney when they were level, remember, at half time. Oliver, good work by the All Blacks from the kickoff. They want some continuity here to score some points before the break to go into the half with a lead. Alatini makes the burst near the 22. Well, this is the one, maybe Mertens with a drop kick. Shifts it on. Oh, they're going for the try. Maxwell, referee playing advantage, and it's right out in centre field. Well, it's exactly what they wanted. Got to stay the blind side, Marshall. I'd say they should take the penalty, shouldn't they? Let's Three. wait and see. Umanga feeds it on. Mertens. Cullen, they're still playing advantage. Well, advantage. Well, I would say that's very liberal use of the advantage, law because that is a long time to play the advantage. Admittedly, Kaplan made his decision and called out advantage still. But it's, you certainly have to ask the question, it's an interesting rule, when does the advantage law stop? How long must play continue before the advantage is over? However, from a new... Yes. So this is the build-up, the advantage was given. You can see the arm going out. Maxwell, I thought, should have moved the ball on. There was a one-man overlap. However, they played the ruck. And I think there were three rucks before... He went back for the, the kicker goal, however, to New Zealand, of course. A great advantage to turn two points up should Mertens kick this goal. A goal is imminent, I would imagine. Mertens makes the kick, and uh, that is the end of uh, quite a sensational first half. It saw the Wallabies get away to a 12-0 lead. The All Blacks fought back. And at the break, they lead by two. Well, one is hesitant to use the word exceptional, but I would think that would be an exceptional first half of rugby. Fantastic. It had a bit of everything. It had some power forward play. It had some beautiful possession turnovers from lineouts one apiece. It had turnovers from rucks and malls. It had some absolutely tremendous creative play in the back line, creating space, putting a man through the hole, breaking the tackle perhaps overlaps and some superb tries really finishing what had been wonderful little series of movements so really it has been a tremendous performance by both teams both teams completely equal in my mind in this game and i can't wait for the second half two tries each in the first half mortlock and roth for australia cullen got a couple for the all blacks and they lead at the break at the westpac trust stadium in wellington by 20 points to 18. Stand by for a brilliant final 40 minutes in this test as Mertens goes long, too long. By a whisker. Even so, it's a bad mistake. Nisbo, just to clarify, it seems that the Williams uh, replacement may well be a bloodbun. Keep an eye on that one. Okay. So Jonathan Kaplan talking about the props putting their hand on the deck just like that one you saw. <laughs> Often they do it for the initial hit. Kefu off the back of the scrum. Latham. And the little nugster has been so effective in this game so far. But uh, this time pushed it uh, towards touch. Jonathan Kaplan thinks this is a uh, wallaby ball, but I suspect not. Well, Latham putting the kick through. It didn't, didn't look like it hit anybody. Ed Morrison across on the far side. He saw that it was uh, off the boot of Latham. That's a bad throw first up from Oliver. All Blacks still haven't got those lineouts dead right. Jeremy Paul, who came on with six minutes remaining in the first half, places it for Gregan. Larkham now. Oh, dear me. Welcome to the field, Ben June. Well, Jonah hits him with everything. Alatini. I'd say he hit him with everything and more. Well, that's a great tackle by the Australians going forward. And it's a turnover. Stolen by Jeremy Paul. Well, one for one. What a start to the second half. So away it goes. Alatini hits uh, John Eels with everything. That's a crunching tackle. Referee playing advantage. Here it is, John Eels, he's not that well either, John Eels. Cullen. And there'll be a penalty. Tackler! Tackler! Ferocious 
Ellis tackling at the start of the second half. Release him. Tackler. Andrew Merton is pushing for the sideline and uh, well the talking point so far Ben Tune has only been on the park a minute look at this oh, take that well welcome back but didn't he do well to place the ball but Jonah stepped up off the deck to pick it up Ben Tune was a bit critical of Jonah Lomu in the press and uh, Lomu has replied Marshall across to for Merton, Zalatini, here he goes again. Takes three or four of them to get him. Now it's freed up for Merton's on the inside for Blackadder. Carried on by Case Muse. Tane Randall has a go. Now Marshall off to Kronfeld. Marshall gets it back. Wallaby defence holding. Short from Oliver to Randall. All Blacks rolling forward with Umanga. Lomu there to help out. Justin Marshall looking up at the referee. Now Andrew Mertens. Strong defence again by the Wallabies. All Blacks struggling to get past the 22. Tana Umanga wants the ball. Hands it off to Todd Blackadder. Looking to free it quickly, now Umanga. He's a real danger man in those situations. Marshall frees it up for Mertens. Lamu. Gregan goes low, stolen by Larkin. And he'll be disappointed with the result, kicked it out. What an incredible period of play. One thing that I did notice is that the All Blacks, when the player drives, there's two or three men that are very, very keen to drive on him. So in other words, it's almost a driving mall, I guess, and it's instantaneous. It means that the opposition has to gather support behind that position and try and equal it, try and slow them up. Well, there's certainly intensity, isn't there, throughout this game. But it was a barrage of attack from New Zealand. And of course, the Australian defence held, and finally Larkin relieved pressure. Tip by Blackadder. Alatini holds it up. Eremia was on the dummy run, now Umanga, and it was uh, just in front of Lomu, who didn't look as though he was quite with the move. No, but it was a pretty confusing move, I didn't know where it was going, maybe Jonah wasn't, hadn't, hadn't heard the call, but have a look at this, Elatini being the playmate, well, the Mertens in fact, yes, it was just the last pass, I think it was just a little bit, a little bit in front. But such is the ability of the Australian defence to gather around where the ball is, New Zealand is forced to be really creative and quite complex. Anton Oliver went reeling back there. Well, yep. obviously something happened <laughs> deep in the dark depths of the front row in this boat. But it's happened before and it'll happen again, no doubt. Larkham. Little for tune. Smashed by Eremia. Wallabies, though, in control of it with Todai Kefu. That's the 10-metre line in the All Black Territory. And uh, a turnover here. Marshall frees it up for Crip. Oh, turnover again. Snapped up by Daniel Herbert. Eels slips it. Ten out from the 22. Latham wasn't expecting it. Now Ben Tune. He's been hitting some big tackles. There's another one. But still retaining possession, Australia. So Gregan feeds Larkin once more. Maxwell tries to nail Little, but he got through it. And then they lost it. Well, that's a great-looking hat, isn't it? I wonder where that person comes from. Two extra. 
Well, that's Ben Chen in the wars again. Three big tackles on this man. He'll know he's back in the game. I dare say he's the sort of bloke that can handle it, though. Outstanding player. Plagued by injury. Tribb tries to slip away from Gregan. Not able to get away. There's an example of a number eight running onto the, onto the ball on the ground, if you can understand me. Mertens with the clearance, getting excellent distance. Latham will have to kick this. He's got nobody back in support. And content seemingly to kick it to touch. Precisely because of the fact that he had no support. <laughs> I wonder if he wrote the sign. Well, within six or seven minutes of finishing Walsing Matilda the other day, the All Blacks are up 21-0. Maybe they should reinstitute it. Going short for Oliver to bring it out. Three kicks, not in five. Didn't go five. In your own time. Quickly taken by Jeremy Paul. He's got a good turn of pace. Chased down by Blackadder, but he beats him. Umanga, that was a run of 30 metres by Jeremy Paul. So Gregan frees it up for Larkham, straight across to Jason Little. Such a crucial stage in this game. The next team that scores takes an advantage. Here is Jeremy Paul again. John Eels on the end of the pass. Now Gregan to Larkham. Not such a flash pass, but David Wilson has it on the 22. David Giffen sets it once more. All Blacks, their turn to defend. Nugs through, Latham coming quickly. And uh, Cullen could have gone anywhere, but Christian Cullen had it covered. Marshall unleashes the big dropout. Well, not normally Marshall's forte, the drop kick, but he seized the situation. He sized up the situation and took the opportunity, drilled it deep to relieve a bit of pressure. And, of course, it just crept over the touchline. Would have been interesting if it kept inside. So, Smithy, I get the opinion here in the commentary box that there's a huge amount of noise down there by the field. Well, it's unusual, it's unusual Murray. 109,000 at 70 on that sideline there, but it doesn't compare to the volume of noise here. It's so much more intense in the stands as well as on the park for me. Jeremy Paul short to Giffen. Paul again for Gregan. Oh dear, not such a good pass, but uh, Daniel Herbert does well to scoop it up. Gregan looks about. Larkham doing a fair bit of kicking as the all-black defence comes up very flat. No points scored so far in the second half. Ten minutes in. Maxwell wants it quickly. Carried on by Carl Hoft. Marshall for Mertens. Eremir's wide. Cullen slaps it beautifully. Umanga. And it's a forward pass. The pass from Cullen was ruled forward. Tremendous movement, though. A double round. And the pass and the tackle. Yes, it did look forward, didn't it? And uh, But you're right, Murray, tremendous move. And again, it's the angle, angled run of Umanga that gets the, uh, or catches the opposition defence out. Here come the Wallabies again. Sterling Mortlock. Well, he certainly did go over top and kill the ball. Well, there's certainly no complaints about the refereeing performance of Jonathan Kaplan. He was outstanding in Super 12. 
And he has uh, pretty much got it right so far this afternoon. Yes, I think he's definitely the big mover and shaker as far as South African referees are concerned. He obviously had potential when he started, but he's had a great game so far today. He's been strict enough to keep the finger on play, but he's also been liberal enough to allow the game to, to evolve. And I think that's so vital, particularly at international level. Don't try and take the steam out of the match by refereeing, let the players do it. All Blacks not challenging in the line-out, as again it's uh, Giffen. Paul tries to make a metre or so. Regan chased down by uh, Randall, good tackle by Cronfeld. Snapped up by Craig now, Aramea. He's got the speedsters with him, Cullen. Took a while to drag it in. Umanga has it. And the All Blacks still in possession. Slips it, does uh, Marshall to Kronfeld. They need to reset. Mertens shifting wide for Cribb. Oliver. Again, it's Randall. Cribb is there to help out. Blackadder shifts it on for Maxwell. Maxwell going for the dummy. <laughs> It's there again for Justin Marshall. Eremia who made the initial burst. No gaps there though. Trapped near their 10 metre line. Mertens on the inside. Almost. Pops it. Oliver. 10 out from the 22. Marshall. And uh, the Wallabies a mile offside. Well, a mile offside and perhaps the hint of a professional foul. Thank you, Alfred. Five. Let go. Let go. Let go. Okay. Okay. I've got it. I've got it. Come away. Come away. Leave it. Leave it. Please go to your side. Well, this will be interesting because it's a certain three points at this stage to New Zealand. But there's a possibility of it being reversed depending on who this man, Ed Morrison, feels was the culprit. From either side, just having a dust up. Georgie Gretton ran in. Nothing to do with him. He didn't need to be part of it. Give him a serious bollock in and give the initial penalty where you were. You were bang on. Thank you. Well, you heard it. A serious bollock in. What does that mean? He's going to tell him off, man. I've got it. I've got it. Yeah, you two. Just a bit of a scrap going on, according to the touch judge. Nothing in it. You two can go. Just keep your nose clean. You've, you've, you've got no business to be in that situation, and you've come in and dished. Some, yeah, just just, just listen. Just listen. That's the, that, the penalty is the original penalty because it's in a better position, but you be careful. You're on, you're on a caution, okay? George Gregan's very happy with that result. I think he uh, thought for a moment this is yellow card stuff. Have a look at the skills and the combination of this play. Uramir kept the ball long enough for Cullen to get in support. He nearly dropped it, which is unusual, but see him move it on to, to Umanga. Almost, it was almost tele telepathic. So Uramir, the pass, Cullen the fumble, and then listen, look at this, pushing it to his good mate, Tana Umanga. He got blown over, ball and all, but then the New Zealand support campaign came. Well, while all that was happening, they were working furiously on Josh Cronfeld on his left knee. There's a hint that there may be some blood involved here at the moment. Ruben Thorne is on the jersey 19. Now John Eels down towards Lomu, and the game's still on. 10 metre line as Mark Connors makes the tackle. You're on, you're on, hold this, 10. Alatini feeds off to Muse. He's got it up really high here. He'll need to get it down shortly as uh, the All Blacks now control it. Alatini for Mertens. Trip. Looking to slip it uh, wide to Cullen. Just overran him and the ball is back on the Wallaby side. Mertens getting back from the Latham kick. Latham's closing him down smartly. Mertens is going to head out to centre field. Oh. Well, that was superb play by Andrew Mertens. 
He anticipated the kick. He knew that Christian Cullen was out of position. And he ran back desperately. And then the kick came from his great foe, of course, Stephen Larkin, who followed up. Mertens chose to try and beat him, and there he is right there beating him. And then he took off, and all of a sudden he thought, hello, I've got three men to beat here. No chance, and he drove, set it up, just trying to get over that advantage line. Well, where is the advantage line from sort of 60 metres? Who would know? But really, it was a great effort. Ron Cribble, he's made his mark for sure. You'll notice too that Rand, Shane Randall, uh, Tane Randall, a uh, big pardon, is on the open side with uh, Kronfeld not there. Here come the All Blacks again. Lomu. Umanga frees it up for Mertens. Taking on the defence today, Andrew Mertens. Knocked down by the Wallabies. And in fact, it was firstly lost forward by the All Blacks. Well, it's still, who would believe, it's still 20 points to 18. 17 minutes into the second go, half, which has been pulsating. But what a great position Australia find themselves in here to attack. New Zealand without a true open side flanker on the field. Making the decision earlier this week to leave Scott Robertson out of the reserve bench. Yes, we've seen some strong tackling in the uh, second half there. We saw that before. Lomu fired up. But look at Alatini going in as well. And that has inspired this all-black defence. It's been very strong here in the second half. But what an attacking opportunity here in midfield. Have a look at this. Look at the Australian backs on both sides. Not giving away any secrets to New Zealand. See how they're stacked behind each other? So how would you defend against this? Regan away to Jason Little. Couldn't deliver the pass. He would have thrown it forward. Ooh, so close to a turnover there. In fact, it, there it is. So in other words, because that hand, and I think it was Oliver's hand, I may be wrong there, was over the top from New Zealand trying to pull the ball back. The Australian man in possession holding on to the ball until his support arrived. Kick from uh, Mertens is uh, not out. So Latham, as Mertens goes in to make the tackle, now it's uh, Mark Connors, who surprisingly didn't make the starting lineup as the Wallabies have it in possession in New Zealand Territory. Gregan across for Larkham. Little is hounded by Alatini. Gregan heaves it out to John Eels. Change of direction again. Larkham is nailed. On the New Zealand side. Cullen to Maxwell. Mertens. Lomu. What a tackle by David Wilson. All those years of experience. And David Wilson, one on one with Jonah, lowers him in a copybook tackle. We're going to play. Yep. Yes. So there's the tackle. And somewhere the ball came. Well, there it is. Really fundamentally was tackled in the ball on the New Zealand side. So watch Andrew Mertens. He's carrying a bit of an injury here. He's now down on the deck. Jonah not able to get the pass to a New Zealand support, which was too far behind. Play to continue. To the back it goes. Thorne cleverly tips it to Alatini. Near the 10-metre line and held on to by an Australian player on the ground. Richard Harry it is. And Andrew Mertens, who has this uh, ankle problem, is going to be asked now to kick for goal. Well, it's an interesting one because he has to plant his left foot, of course. That's the ankle issue. It happened in a tackle several phases ago. And it's a long kick. It's a probably about 47 metres. 45. There's a bit of wind, Smitty, down there. It's a little bit of a southerly. 
Well, it's the swirling wind. It's the nature of the direction of it, Murray. Uh, at the moment, you would think being a southerly, it's right behind Andrew Mertz, but the little flags on top of the post, they're wavering all over the place. Tough, tough kick. Beautifully judged. Well, not so tough for New Zealand's highest point scorer. I just wonder, though, how good his ankle is. Would be very difficult for New Zealand to lose him at this stage. He's had an absolute blinder. Done everything he could have been asked of him. Larkham short, Alatini. Wasn't able to control it, so Sterling Mortlock has it for Todai Kefu. Wallabies hitting back almost immediately with eels into the gap. They're only 15 metres out here. It bounces for Gregan. A little. Kefu once more. Gregan playing advantage. All Blacks offside. Mark Connors. Now George Gregan. The advantage still applies. And he'll go back. And this is a penalty right in front. Well, I think that equals up. That's all we ever ask of referees, consistency. And I think that equals up the move just before half-time where he played very liberal length of time of the advantage law. You've had one of those on that well, side. And as both of uh, two changes of interest, we've been told that Tony Brown will be coming on very shortly in Jersey 17. And Jim Williams, it was a blood bin. He will be returning for Mark Connors in an unnumbered jersey. 20 minutes in the blood bin. You've got to be joking. That is a joke. Yes, there's no doubt in my mind it was a strategic decision. Obviously, he had concerns who he was going to play because the program had Mark Connors opening at six, Jim Williams at eight, and Kefu came on in the number six jersey. Last minute change. This way he's managing to rotate all his loose forwards. So, Sterling Mortlock. Yes, kicking right out of the Phillips signage on the on the pitch. Back to the two-point advantage now for the All Blacks. That's where we were at half time. And here's the change. Well, you change your playmaker, your first five. It naturally changes the flow of the game. It will be interesting to see how it will evolve. This man attacks the opposite line very aggressively. His defense is very strong. Very good first 5 8, but quite different to Andrew Mertens. Williams is on, and uh, Kefu is out. Brown going straight down to Jim Williams. Gregan onto the favoured left boot of uh, Chris Latham. Thrilling test match in the Wellington, the first at the new stadium. 16 minutes left. And a single solitary penalty apiece in the second half. 24 minutes old. But it's been up and down the field. Anton Oliver towards the back where Krug is the target. Very flat to Brown. He'll run at them all day, Tony Brown. Makes good ground too and sets it for Marshall. Slips it for Karl Hoft. Powerful surge by the prop forwards. Carried on by Blackadder. Quick hands to Umanga. Oliver. Five out from the 22. All Blacks in a bit of a bunch. Iremia. Marshall once more for Umanga. Off to uh, Ruben Thorne on the park for Josh Kronfeld. Now Tony Brown. Still near the 22. Case Mews, powerful run. Got past Jeremy Paul. Now Brown again. Alatini to Lomu. Tune has him low. 
turn over to Australia. Not enough all back forwards over the ball. Good defence by Australia. Latham unleashes again with a left boot. The All Blacks driven right back to halfway. Well, significant number of phases. And really, sometimes I felt didn't quite go the right direction. Norm Maxwell slow to come back. That's where the turnover was. And New Zealand just out of numbers, really. Australia beating them to that breakdown right on the touchline. So back to halfway. New Zealand ball using all the options. Lots of different jumpers so far today. Well, that's a dreadful throw. That's nowhere near straight. Yes, and uh, Jonathan Kepler not standing in a good position to see that, so he looked back to his touch judge to see whether it was straight. OK, just break up, son. Well, Murray, here's an interesting change for the All Blacks. Wonder whether Wayne Smith's going for combinations here because he's making the change at half back. And Justin Marshall will be replaced by Byron Kelleher. Well, it's significant, isn't it? Because these two play together, of course, Kelleher. Marshall's had a great game, in my opinion. One of the best I've seen. He's back to his best. He's been so dominant around the scrum. His defence has been huge also. Like a fourth loose forward. Kelleher against Gregan now. Gregan off to uh, Larkham. Herbert tries to bust in midfield. They've got him up off the ground here. So the Wallabies have to free it up, and they do it cleverly. Little punching in behind Umanga. Umanga and Cullen. Ran it back inside the 22. Oh, threw it away, and this time it doesn't work. Exactly. Well, there's no need for words here. The combination not quite right, I guess. Christian Cullen looking to make something of it. So here it is, an opportunity for Australia. David Giffen has been pretty much the target man in this uh, Australian lineout. Taking the All Blacks right down to within 10 metres. Regan Larkin, flat to tune, heaving it on. Now tune's got it, and they've thrown it forward. Well, the defence was stretched. If the pass had been good, it would have been interesting. There's a little bit of cover coming across for New Zealand. Let's have a little look on a replay. Yes, the pass there would have given him an opportunity, but I think really Callan had it covered. So this is difficult for Byron Keller, straight on the field. And I thought he'd have to throw the big pass from underneath the sticks, but I think that was a wise move. Now he passes it away to his uh, Otago teammate, Tony Brown, and successfully cleared by Brown. Coming down towards the last 10 minutes. Another thrilling contest. Again, Giffen. Gregan flat to Little. Back again for Larkham. Herbert on the run. Tune. Dragged down by Eremia. Stolen by Ruben Thorne. What good work. Yes, it was great work by Ruben Thorne. Quality stuff. Callagher does it himself. Latham into the arms of Lomu. Maxwell's first man up. Now it's Cribb, just on Australian territory. Could be a turnover, is it? No. So we couldn't see it from here, but Cribb must have lost the ball as he went in. Changing the all-back front row, Carl Hoff making way for Craig Dowden, jersey 21. Come with me, come with me. A veteran of Bledisloe Cup test matches, Craig Dowd is on. Just come with me. On me. 
Keep your hand up. Had a little casual conversation with Craig Dowd the other day. He's delighted to be involved in this growing team. Wallabies having a crack at the defence was Larkin, but closed quickly the gap did play on. It's on the all-black side. Uh, well, he said leave it. And they didn't leave it. So Larkham going in with the ball, planting it beautifully. Well, there it was. It was stolen by the New Zealand player. And then, yes, well, the referee was saying leave it goal because the player lying on the deck, I couldn't see. It was a numberless player, I think, so it might have been Mark Connors. Jim Williams must have been playing the ball when he's lying on the deck. The referee clearly said leave it, leave it, because the New Zealand player had stolen the ball. Well, interesting here that uh, the All Blacks have a throw to the line out and it will be Mark Hammett making the throw. Will it or not? No, Anton Oliver's gone for the ball. The cards were up. Oliver stays. Thank you. <laughs> So <laughs> the referee asking, who is on the field? Which number two? Oliver it's gone, it's gone. has a reprieve. Well, it's a crucial throw. New Zealand would like this ball deep on attack. Beautifully claimed by Maxwell. Kelleher for Tony Brown. Alatini slipping through the half gap. Kelleher. Works it up for Ruben Thorn. Lays it again for Kelleher. Brown. Tane Randall. Ball knocked forward by Australia. Or knocked out of the tackle anyway. But it's play on. Alatini again. Eremia. There it is again for Tony Brown. Here's the call from Maxwell. Away for Brown once more. Cullen to Crib. Flicks it to Cullen. And Mortlock comes up with a big tackle. And Cullen realises the importance of it too. Well, he did enjoy it though, but it's tremendous to see once again. I mentioned it, Ron Crib having the ability to play with the backs as a back. Well, it was the ball tucked away from his arm and he was trying to get the pass back inside. So a great little foray for New Zealand, putting a little bit of the heat on, desperately wanting to score some points, of course, with a two-point margin, the same as it was at half-time. Mark Hammett joins the fray. Troy Flavel is the only substitute, oh, and uh, Leo McDonald, of course. The All Blacks have a couple in reserve. Deep inside the 22, Larkham fires it across to Latham, nudged ahead by Herbert, and he puts it out. And that really was a nothing move that's but, given the All Blacks the ball. But it's a great signal and compliment to New Zealand defence. As the ball was kicked in the touch, several spectators stood up and pushed their arms in the air because really they are struggling in the back line to break the advantage line or break the, the All Black back line defence. Mark Hammett's first throw. It goes to Maxwell. It was supposed to go to Blackadder, but it doesn't matter too much. Brown to Lomu. Sets it up nicely in centre field for Callagher to feed off to Tony Brown. Very nearly slipped through. And the ball lost forwards. Brown prepared to have a crack at the defence. Well, I think that'd be his middle name, wouldn't it? Tony, have a crack, Brown. Well, we saw he lost the ball. Lumanga goes through, scoops it up with one hand. Well, the Australian line just holding. No more. Larkham. Herbert is held again. 15 metres from their own goal line here, the Wallabies, reluctant to kick it away. Wide for Latham, and that's a, a very good clearance. Somebody had to do it, really. 
And the Wallabies have it back in all-black territory. Well, there it is. That's the prize. Winner take all. In this game, not only would it be the Bledders Low Cup, but also odds on to win the Tri-Series. Under five minutes left. Everything up for grabs. Hammett for Blackadder, the old Crusaders combination coming to the fore. Twisting and turning from Ron Cribb. Cleared by Kelleher for Brown. Alatini, Eremia decides to hang on. Ball is there. Well, that, he held on to it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a rock or not. He's holding the ball on the deck. So, there's only two points in this game today. This is definitely kickable. Huge kick here for Sterling Mortlock to give the Wallabies the lead back. And this guy, I just wonder whether uh, John Eels just contemplated for a second to have a crack himself. We've known him to take these pressure kicks in the past, so this is a long way out. Well, long way out into a light southerly, which I don't think will affect the kick. Being the southern end, he's kicking toward. And the height of the grandstand, I think, would make any win only marginal. But even so, it is a long kick. He has the distance, Mortlock, if he kicks it cleanly and accurately. So everybody will be sitting on their seats for sure. Yes, Murray, he's got to make sure he just goes through the routine of his, of his, or his kicking routine, concentrate on what he has to do here. Enormous pressure, but he's just got to make sure he focuses on his technique, try and eliminate what's happening around him, and just look for that rhythm. But he's just got to go through the process in his mind. He's laying the ball very flat, Greg. Yes, it's the way he kicks it. He's just got to make sure that he doesn't try to punch it too hard. Just goes through the technique and just keeps everything nice and still. Pushed it wide. 23 to 21. The All Blacks hanging on. So this is going to be an interesting 22 dropout. With just a few minutes left, two or three perhaps on the clock, Tony Brown kicking off so important for New Zealand to recover possession. Good distance from Brown, down as far as Ben Tune. They'll meet him in Australian territory, and Tane Randall thumps him to the ground. Nicely placed for Gregan. Larkham. Herbert hit strongly by Alatini. Oh, that's terrific defence from Peter Alatini. Yes. I get the feeling that every heart on that field, every heart with a black jersey, is giving all. Have a look at the way he was hit. Daniel Herbert by Alateen just driving him in a touch. Of course, that forces a line-out New Zealand ball, so in effect, that's a turnover. And this by the Australian substitutions keep me guessing. Joe Roth, believe it or not, is back on the park now in jersey 11 from Sterling Mortlock. Well, that's another funny one, isn't it? Did he have a blood bin too, Smithy? Let's not worry too much about it as Brown punches it down behind Roth. Oh, that's terrific from Tony Brown. Now Roth, what's he going to do? Nailed by Brown on an excellent tackle. It's on the Australian side. And Larkin has to clear. Randall has stayed back. So the confidence to counter-attack. Don't kick it. Randall powerfully towards the 10-metre line. Umanga. No try scored in the second half. It's just been a penalty apiece. Cullen steps up to the mark from fullback. Lays it back for Cribb. The black wave is up to the 22. Keller. Cullen for Umanga. Pass was thrown forward anyway. And Umanga couldn't hold it. Now the Wallabies with a chance with Roth. Nudged down by Kelleher. Well, it's all happening. The turnover of possession. That's the excitement of it. 
So it's Australia ball. Very, very short. Short side. Just seconds remaining. The Wallabies are still 70 metres away. Come on, let's form, let's form. Here's the mark. Oh, no locks, no locks. So, no option but to run this ball, Australia. So, no here they come. Final throw of the dice. Little up for Herbert. Head on with Cullen. Blackham charged. Kevin Brown. All Blacks looking to get there in numbers. Hitting it with everything. Well, must be New Zealand ball. It could have easily been a penalty there too to New Zealand because the ball wasn't released and the two New Zealand players actually dragged him, ball and all, he still held on to possession. But in fairness to Jonathan Kaplan, he tripped over. Terrific din in the stadium. Two minutes to go, says Jonathan Kaplan. What a tremendous attacking position though. Big blindside. They'd have to go that way, wouldn't they? And that's the scrum. You see the scrum being turned already by Australia? Well, you'd have to have Crib going off the back with Kelleher outside him. Yes, going the other way, in fact, using his number six to drive. Off to Reuben Thorne. There really needs to be momentum. Diving, and not quite. Still there, though, for Tang Randall. Trade down, oh so close. Now they free it up for Brown. Alatini. Players out on their feet. Kelleher the long ball. Cullen for Umanga. Didn't make it. Wallabies take it quickly. Tim back out of asking for full time. Interesting. The Wallabies taking a short kick, but paying the price. New Zealand defence gathered, drew them into touch, meaning New Zealand throw to the ball. Let's to the line out. Wayne Smith, he's come all the way down. One minute to go. Don't have a heart attack, Wayne. What a moment this is. Big throw for Mark Hammett. Oh, they've turned it. Wallabies have it through Mark Connors. So here's a chance. It's their last one. Larkin. And he puts it out. Jonathan Kaplan has a look at the watch. Still time remaining. <laughs> You've got to laugh. Even Jonathan Kaplan has smiled his face. Everybody's screaming with a full-time whistle. Except the referee, and he is the sole judge of time. The biggest line-out throw of the series. Josh Kronfeld's on his feet. He's on the sideline. Just make sure the ball goes in, OK? Ball in first. The heat is on. They go short. Australia. And with the Wallabies. Herbert. Got to be careful here about the penalty. Jim Williams takes it in. Now, Joe Ruff tries to go past Cullen. Oh, there, there's the penalty. There's the penalty. Yes. I think he was relieved to say that, John. He was going to have a shot, thank you. Well, that was interesting because the ball was actually swiffed forward by the Australian player. It looked like it was going to be a turnover. And I just wonder what the referee's decision was on the penalty. However, it's history now. How about this for stepping up to the mark? John Eels is going to take the kick himself. Well, he has to because Sterling Mortlock's off the field. And I guess he's the only other goal kicker, recognised goal kicker. Joe Roth, perhaps, on occasions. Well, here it is. The last two lineouts 
for New Zealand throws the run by Australia. This kick will decide the fate of the Blenners Low Cup. Look at the excitement. Well, they're a great team, and it's been a great victory, no doubt about it. Well, John Eels, the pressure, the ability to concentrate, and he just kicked it straight through the centre. Have a look at him. He's delighted, and he's been a mighty man in this game. As I said, they won the last two lineouts on the New Zealand throw. That's pressure on the New Zealand lineout. Well, it's been a superb match every way. But which way you want to look at it, it's been a great one. It's been some tremendous refereeing in this game. Jonathan Kaplan stepped up to the mark. It's been a wonderful game. Both teams fired everything they had. And here it is again in the year 2000. holding the lift aloft is John Eels. Every picture tells a story. Andrew Merton's hobbling away. I remember a classic line from my whole black days. Feel the hurt was sent once. Feel the hurt to come back harder again. <laughs>